Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we have an Astor in wolf's clothing. It's actually a Pi APJ, I think. Um, I've had quite a few problems with, with it, the least of which was the IF can not being in the radio and the wires hanging out, etc. But the front, the, the back end, I should say, the amplification section is working now. The case is something that only a mother could like in some respects. It's got that British austere look about it. It's made out of cheap wood, um, plywood. Um, yeah, it's maybe I could get to like it in a, in a few years <laughs> but yeah it's actually working quite well the front end we also had a couple of other problems with it which I'll explain in the video I've also had some success with last week's project the Aristone, the red one it is actually very very stable now that I've uh, updated something in it and I'll tack that on the end or yeah I'll tack that on the end so without further ado let's get into it well here it is the old Pi APJ from around about 19... 54 or something, 53, and the tuning doesn't do anything. There is a bit of a crack in the glass up there, which I'll be able to do something with. It's not that noticeable. It's only a very small crack. And so that's volume and on off switch. This is obviously the tuning, and this one is the tone. And round the side, it's a very big radio. We have the band selector switch, which seems a bit wonky. Let's see if we can get this turned around. Uh, this is caught. It's missing a valve. Quite sure what that's out of. It looks like a Astor from the period because it was made by Astor under the Phillips Monkeyer. Um, it's got 6A and 7 there, 6UG6. No, 6U7G, 6U7G there, this one is, or should be, 6AV6, and this one should be a 6V6GT, a bit different. And this one is the rectifier, which is a 5Y3GT. So it looks fairly basic in here. It's got the cord. is actually jammed in where the radio the speaker is speaker isn't connected here so 
So I'm not sure what's going on there. It's got the phono input, aerial. I'm pretty sure I have one of these lying around somewhere. Or maybe not, uh, depends on the model I've got underneath the bench here. But they're fairly common. Um, I'm reluctant to plug this in. But I'm going to anyway, I think. So, no dial lights. And I can see anyway. Absolutely no signs of life, but the light globe is warm, but it's not glowing. Hmm, okay, so absolutely no activity whatsoever. Although that is hot, so we do have power through it. But as I said, the speaker terminals are not connected to anything. What I might do is put our test speaker on it. But who knows where these have been connected to. And of course we don't have the output valve so we're not going to get any sound out of it. Well I think I've worked out what the valve, missing valve was. It's a 6AQ5, 6AQ5 and the dial lights are now lighting up on it. Don't have any sound at all. It's only at 120 volts or something. But no heat there. No heat there. It's getting warm. So I'll bring it up a little bit further. None of these are glowing other than the rectifier valve. Now I have to be super careful with this because the transformer or the output transformer is actually um, actually has B plus on it. So we've got nothing at all. That one's not getting hot. And the output's not getting hot. Okay. So looks like a major work needs to be done underneath. So yellow on the band switch relates to local F uh, AM. AM. So I'm going to take this radio off before it falls off and 
take this out of the case somehow or another and we'll go from there I'm not confident this is a good valve but and I'm not confident is actually the right valve okay so we have some progress here the 6 AQ5 was pretty much dead I expected that because it was in my scrap valve pile uh, so I've taken this out of another radio uh, B15 the cap on this valve was just floating in the breeze so I've just bypassed that the valve is pretty weak so I'm going to have to buy a new valve I'm not going to um, even attempt to repair this though it's fairly easy to do um, yeah so it's actually making a hum and it's crackling a little bit now I don't have an aerial connected to it so I'll find a bit of wire which of course is never around when you want it here we go All right here we go That seems to be making a bit of a noise. Maybe we do. Just um, stuck. okay so the tone control is on the tuning control and the tuning control is on the tone control so that is why I couldn't tune it before we're getting some hissing and fissing in uh, yes, and the the dim bulb has come up very, very bright. So I'm going to see about replacing the caps on it now, and we'll see how we go with that because it is actually working to a degree. We're getting some sound of it, out of it, even if not from the front end. So I'll be back when I get it out of the case or the cabinet. So I've just been refreshing my memory on these chassis and this is very much alive. So it has about 350 volts on it. So, um, don't try this at home. So, this capacitor here has been replaced. Looks pretty old. That, uh, that looks alright. Maybe it's been replaced or maybe not. Um, doesn't have any tolerance or anything on it. This one here has been replaced, this resistor. The rest of the caps look pretty original. That one looks pretty black. So that could be our main our culprit. And there's one hiding down in there. And one up there and there. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven caps to replace. 
and yeah and then of course we've got the main electrolytic filter cap here so I'm going to have to be uh, extra careful with this one in case it leaps out and tries to kill me So we've got three terminals on this. Unfortunately, this one is soldered down. So I'm going to have to work out what to do here. Well, I've just replaced this 20 four or 25 microfarad uh, capacitor here, the electrolytic, and this 0.25, which is now a 0.22 capacitor. But I've also discovered that there is a wire and another end of it there by the looks of it it has been cut but it looks like there was something in between it so it's got a bit of a hook on it and this has got a hook on it too so I don't know whether there was a component in there or what so we'll have to investigate that um, so what pin is that? That is pin 7. Oh, and that one, and that's not connected either. What the devil is going on with this? This goes up inside. And this would have to be replaced anyway because it's pretty cracked. It's that horrible old rubber stuff. I was just going to get this working and then deal with it all later. But things is what three three wires not going anywhere. So that as I said is looks like it's been hooked at some stage. That looks like it's been hooked. And this is just cut off. Oh, and there's another wire down there, which is hooked as well. So it looks like some something's missing or... Oh, and the transformer, yeah, the IF transformer is missing. That's what it is. So that would go on to the four pins of that transformer. Now I did see a loose one around in this one. Yes. Okay. So I'll test this and I'll get back to you. I'm not really sure whether you can see this or not. But the wires, the connections are, look fine. And the actual uh, coil wire is actually connected to the connection wires there on the side. But the coil itself seems to be open circuit, so I'm never going to as I say, I'm never going to rewind that in a pink fit. Because it's actually done on a bobbin machine. And I doubt my sewing machine, as good as it is, is going to replicate that. So 
I can't do very much more with this until I find another one which may be quite, oh, may not be there's plenty of these radios around in wrecked state so I'm just going to have to wait until one comes up and do it then meanwhile I'll just uh, recap it and see if the output works okay so I've done a bit of a bodgy job on this especially around the electrolytics here I'll tidy all those up I may even put them inside the old can but this one is it's got a phenolic base on it and all that sort of thing so and it's uh, been soldered to the chassis so it's going to be pretty hard to get out but I've got the front or the back end working if, if you like to call it that so it is making quite a clear noise if I can get this to it's quite stable quite sure why it's not coming in through here well it is <laughs> so is that yeah so that comes out of the coil then goes in yeah okay so this is working. And I'm going to see about a IF can or transform or whatever I like to call it. And another valve. And then I can finish it off maybe this is part one of this radio I'll no doubt have about three or four parts for this and for now I'm going to sign off and say goodbye and see you next week see you on the flip side As a postscript to this Aristone, I replaced this 470 uh, picofarad capacitor with a 470, or was labelled 470, ceramic. It measured at around about 427 picofarads, the little ceramic capacitor. And guess what? This is absolutely dead stable. You know, there are um, sacred items held by the Vatican that have to be returned to communities. There are so many steps, uh, and one of the most important ones is... It's really to hard to tune in, obviously. ...the of discovery, and that was not mentioned at all today by the Pope, and that was also... Because that doctrine of discovery was the basis upon which uh, countries and the church itself uh, sought to eradicate indigenous people and to remove them from their land or to not recognize that they were on it their land. It sounds pretty hollow, Arnolius, uh, but it does sound, it's very clear, it's got a very wide band on it, so it's not muffled at all yeah so all in all not a bad radio but not a great one either